Okay, so we want to do row reduction to a triangular form, doing it one step at a time, thinking in terms of linear transformations as affected by matrices. Which matrices? Let's think about it. Remember, there are three row reduction operations, the first of which is an exchange of two rows. Let's work in the context of a specific example. Let's say, I don't know, A is a four by four matrix, and we want to switch the first two rows. And think of that as some matrix R times A. What matrix R does that job? Well, whatever that matrix is, it's gotta be four by four, and it has to be the identity matrix outside of the first two by two subblock. That's what controls those first two rows. Now, what you can observe is that what we need to fill in in order to affect this switch is a little two by two block, zero, one, one, zero. More generally, what this matrix R is, is the identity matrix with those corresponding rows switched. You do this operation to the identity matrix. Now, what's the determinant of such a matrix? Well, you can uh, factor out all the other rows and columns, and you're just left with this two by two block, zero, one, one, zero. And that has determinant negative one. In general, any matrix that winds up switching two rows is always going to have determinant negative one. That solves everything for us on the algebraic level. What does it mean geometrically? Well, remember that we interpreted the determinant as a volume of a parallelepiped, but we had to take absolute values in there. Why? Because the determinant is really measuring an oriented volume. So what are we doing when we're switching two of the rows? Well, um, you know, it's as if we're exchanging the vectors. We're not changing the volume, but we're just changing the orientation of the volume on that parallelepiped. Okay, that's the first operation. The second operation is rescaling of a row by some factor. Let's say in the same uh, example, we take the third row and we triple it. What matrix R does that job? Well, that matrix has to be the identity matrix, except for the third row in which case, instead of a one on the diagonal, you have a three on the diagonal. Check it, check and make sure that that does the right thing. This holds in general. Now, what is the determinant of such a matrix? Well, in general, you're gonna have an identity matrix and one of those diagonal terms is going to be replaced with a constant C instead of a one. Oh, well, this is easy. This is a diagonal matrix and therefore triangular and therefore the determinant is the product of the diagonal elements. In this case, one times one times one times one times C. The determinant is C. Okay, that's the algebraic perspective on this. What's the geometric perspective? Oh, this is easy to see. If I have a parallelepiped and I triple the lengths of one of the component vectors that de defines it, then of course I'm gonna triple the volume. Okay, so row multiplication by C changes the determinant by a factor of C, and we can understand that algebraically and geometrically. Last operation, this is a combination of two rows. This one, a little bit harder to see geometrically. Let's think about what is happening algebraically. Let's say I want to clear out that five in the first column of the fourth row. What do I do? I subtract four times the second row from it. What matrix affects that? Well, it's gonna be an identity matrix in the first three rows. In the last row, what I get is exactly what I do to the identity matrix with that same operation. I'm subtracting five times the second row of the identity from the fourth row of the identity. Now check and make sure that works. In general, if you um, add a multiple, say C of one row to another row, you wind up getting a lower triangular matrix or an upper triangular matrix and that has determinant equal to one. From a geometric point of view, this is a little bit like shearing. Back when we looked at linear transformations involving shearing, you remember that? That had an off diagonal term. That's exactly what we're doing 
in this case. And recall that shearing does not change area, volumes, things like that. So from an algebraic perspective and a geometric perspective, what we see is that that third operation, row combination, leaves the determinant the same.